Hey, how's it going? Hans Schaff here on this beautiful day here outside Huntsville, Alabama. And uh, today is December 7th, I believe, 2023. And I uh, just want to share with you a quick little overview, kind of where we're at in the property as far as development goes, and also some exciting things that we have going on. In fact, let me just go ahead and leave with that right now. Right now, until the end of the year, until the end of December 2023, we're going to be now to help with people out with the holidays. And if you haven't heard, we're now offering half down to secure your lot. There's a couple of phase one lots still available, believe it or not. So for half down for just $5,000, you can secure your lot on this, on this property, $5,000 down. You pay the remaining $5,000 six weeks prior to your build, your tiny home build being finished. So here's what that might look like. So for a phase one lot, $10,000. Phase two, phase two lot right here on the lake from the north side over there, east side that you can see, or the south side here where we also allow Airbnb rentals right here where I'm standing. And I'm going to take you on a quick tour walking around to kind of show you what it looks like at the, at the moment. Still more changes coming and some exciting stuff happening tomorrow I'm going to share as well. So be sure to click that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos and let other people know that what's going on here with these videos. Um, but I'm going to share with you some exciting stuff tomorrow, some cool new pictures, some things we're going to rearrange and move around tomorrow for the, for the camera and for the video to kind of get ready for the holidays. I'll just kind of leave it at that. It's going to be pretty fun. So be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos like that. A lot more in the works as well. Again, we're going to do a Woodville video, Scottsboro, Huntsville, kind of show you the different areas and what's around this property as well. That's all coming in, in the can as well. And some more things over the holidays we'll be doing too. So you don't want to miss out. Click that subscribe button. Okay, last uh, last promo there. So going back to, I'm going to stand on this side now, let you see that side of the lake. Um, of course, here's the rocks in that previous video you can kind of see. We put that rip wrap right out there. All of that, I think it was like six or seven different uh, loads of rock that put, we put down there, about 250 feet, 300 feet or so of riprap. And so the lake level is going to be right to the bottom of that uh, riprap right there. So it's going to look real nice. You're going to look out across the west side of the lake, and you're going to see this nice riprap, a western edge uh, with some, some trees behind it. And then, of course, the sunset. We have some awesome sunsets here. The sun's on the west side, obviously, so it's going to be shooting this direction. So um, you've probably already seen some of the pictures, but I got more and more pictures and video we'll be doing in, during dusk and sunset because... The, the sun coming out over the, the foothills and stuff coming this direction in the, in the afternoons is going to be really cool. So I digress. Let's talk about those, uh, the special. Okay, half down. So, so for example, let's say you're wanting to get a phase one lot. So normally it's $10,000 during the holidays until the end of the year. We're going to allow people to put down just half, help them out with the holidays and things like that. So you put half down, $5,000 to secure your lot. Then let's say um, you get your tiny house ordered uh, today. And they tell you that your, your home is going to take, say, four months before they, they get it built, right? they got a lot of sales going on and a lot of homes being built right now. So it's going to be maybe three or four months or so before your tiny house is built. So that gives you three or four months to go ahead and get the rest of those funds set aside to finish paying off your, your tiny house and for the $5,000 left for that lot. So if they tell you that, hey, you know, April 15th, your tiny home, we need the balance paid because it's going to be ready in six weeks. Then you need to go ahead and pay us that, that remaining $5,000 to get your paid get your lot uh, fully paid off and secured so that uh, when your tiny home, tiny home is done, you know, you'll have your lot ready to go. Um, again, for phase two on the lake, those are $15,000. So $7,500 down will help you secure a lot here, let you save up that $7,500, you know, use it for Christmas or buy some more amenities for your tiny house, whatever you want to do. And then again, six weeks prior to your build date, you need to have that other $7,500. You need to send that across here so we can get your lot, you know, all finished for you as well. Okay. So $5,000 down for, the, for uh, lot one, for phase one, seventy five hundred dollars down for a lot in phase two until the end of the year. Hope that is clear and makes sense. All right, now let me go ahead and uh, pick this up and show you do a little walk here around the property. I know we've talked about what's going on here, but just in case you're new and this is the first time you've ever seen this video, this is the Cottages at Pine Lake, a, a new tiny house community on wheels for incredible tiny homes. That's the builder we have featured who is doing all the tiny homes for all fifty four lots that are going to be on this property. We've got uh, 24 lots that will be on the lake itself, and then the remaining lots will be uh, in the forest area on the east side of the property. So we've just developed this, this uh, we just had all this, this lake cleaned out. It was really grown over about 10 years worth of growth, shrubs and, and little saplings and different trees and whatnot. Uh, we had a crew come through here and they, they ripped it all out. Uh, the previous video showed a lot of like that rip wrap on that side over there, the west side of the property. That was probably some of the worst growth that we had. And so they went in there and ripped it all out. And uh, we put this riprap uh, rock that you kind of see in, on reservoirs and lake, lake shores, things like that, to make a really nice and clean look on that side uh, for that walking trail to walk around that west side of the lake. Again, there's going to be a walking trail that goes around this lake. It's probably about a third of a mile or so. 
Uh, so it's a real nice length, not too far, not too short. You can do a few laps if you need to, but it allows you to kind of get all the different views of the lake. You get to walk through the forest. I mean, right next to the dog park. So it's pretty cool how that all looks. And I'll walk you through all this stuff here real quick. Again, we're not done by any means developing this property, but we had a lot of work just done. So I want to kind of show you where we're at right now. So you can just kind of see some of the progress and uh, let you see, you know, how this property is transforming right before your very eyes through the magic of uh, video. So right here where I'm at, and I'll go up a little further, kind of give you a little better perspective. This is going to be, this is the south side of the lake. All right, so real quick, phase one is on the northeast corner. Okay, so in that corner over there, it's in the forested section over there. And these, these trees are probably 75 feet tall or so. Uh, when I have my drone kind of going up, that's about the elevation between 75 and 100 feet. So they're real nice tall trees. So you've got a lot of good shade in the forest, and uh, but you also have a lot of, it's not a real thick forest. It's kind of, because they're so tall, you've got a lot of room kind of between the trees. So it's kind of nice you kind of look up and see the pines and see the leaves and, and all that. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but that phase one is 10 homes and it's gonna be six on the Northeast corner. And then the other side of the clubhouse it's going to be another four. So a total of 10 lots for phase one. There's only a few of those lots still remaining. Uh, we're now, we are selling phase two lots as well as phase one lots. Once the phase one lots sell out at $10,000 per lot, uh, we'll only be selling phase two lots. So phase two is around the lake. Those are actually lots on the lake shore. So literally tiny homes will be between these trees sticking out as close as we can get them over the lake. So you're literally going to have waterfront, lakefront property. Um, so we're very excited about that. And let me keep walking here, kind of show you. So we're going to have on the south side of the property, this is kind of the public part of the property. You've got the road that comes in kind of just behind me, or sorry, in front of me. So behind the camera is the, is the main road as you come in. And uh, that's going to be kind of the public part of the property. So you kind of drive in through the front. You'll see the sign, all that kind of stuff. And you're going to you turn and you kind of drive along the south side of the lake. And then you come to the southeast corner over there. And you, you continue on, oops, that way, around the lake. So right in this section right here, this is where, on the southeast corner right here, kind of hard, sorry, trying to look at the camera and see where I'm pointing. This is where we're going to have the new gate. It's going to be a 20-foot wide uh, remote-controlled or uh, code-controlled gate. So the only, only resident, only long-term residents will have access to the backside, the private part of the property, okay? There'll be 44, possibly a little bit more than that, but we'll have as many as between six and 10 lots here in the front, up to 10 homes that can be on Airbnb right here on these front lots between these trees. So if, for those of you who may be interested in renting your house out, whether it's for, you know, for long-term purpose, you know, for like as a, you don't plan on staying there at all, you just want to have a home to generate some extra income on Airbnb, then, or if you're someone who wants maybe a second home and you're looking to rent it out while you're not there or somewhere in between there, um, any lots that are going to be rentals have to be in the front of the property. We are not allowing any property, uh, any tiny homes in the back of the property, except for primary residences for, for uh, owners only. Okay. So anything past the Southeast corner is only going to be for uh, private for, um, uh, for long-term residents. Now, so if there is going to be any Airbnbs or any kind of rentals, we have up to 10 lots. doesn't mean all 10 of them are going to be rentals, but uh, I think we're going to need at least five, as many as 10 uh, homes, in order to provide additional uh, accommodations for guests, uh, for residents, uh, if you, during the holidays, for example, Christmas is coming up, and say you had your tiny house back there, and you know it's big enough for you and maybe your dog or two, um, or maybe you and your spouse, but you don't have enough room for a guest to stay over comfortably anyway, without kind of completely you know changing the way that you live and having to step over each other, and you know that's not fun. So rather than have to go 15 minutes away and find a hotel somewhere and you know spend money off property. Why not give them the, the same, their own tiny house experience? They can come stay in one of the Airbnbs on site. They can literally walk around the corner and, and have their own tiny house right here. They can rent for a day or two or a week or whatever, however long they're here for. So that you guys can still, you know, you know, uh, socialize and, and, and have fun and dinner and eat and all the things that you're going to do together as well. But now they can have their own space to sleep in and kind of put their stuff in and all that and not clutter up your home because it's a tiny house. You don't really have room for other people's clutter in addition to your own stuff, right? So that's kind of the idea behind it. That's why I've now kind of, we've decided, I'm going to set this down. That's why we've decided to go ahead and open it up for uh, Airbnb rentals. Step back here. So I don't have to bend over. Um, but uh, number one, because we're going to have 54 homes and, you know, we're going to need tiny houses. We're going to need additional accommodations for your guests, whether it's your family, your friends, other people staying over. And we're going to have a lot of visitors. Um, again, we want to keep all those visitors and all those guests 
you know, whether they're coming because they know somebody on the property or not, they want that tiny home experience. We want to be able to give that to them for a day or two or a week or whatever, but isolate that and separate that from the rest of the, of the property. People who are, who are here long term, living here for long term, we don't want to interrupt or interfere with, with their daily living as well. So that's why we're going to have the gate right here on the southeast side of the property. And I apologize if maybe I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself, saying it several different times. Um, You'd be surprised how many questions I get from people who don't quite understand it. So I feel like if I repeat myself enough times, maybe if I say it a little different way, then it'll sink through and someone will get it and not ask the same question over and over again. I don't mind questions. I like answering questions. I want to make sure everyone understands how this is all going to work. So I'm trying to be as clear as possible and I repeat myself. So don't get annoyed in the comments and tell me that, hey, I already said that 10 times. Uh, I just, again, there are people who sometimes it takes it, hearing it a few times to, to fully understand what's going on here. Um, so Southeast corner, 10 lots, Airbnbs. Uh, and or if you're off grid, if, if you're someone who wants to, to go off grid or go partially off grid or minimize your utility bills and not, you know, be able to utilize some of the sun, as you can see with all the trees they are very tall in there, you're not, your solar panel is not going to work so well when it's shady all day. So, of course, you know, this is the almost the, you know, the uh, winter solstice. So it's the shortest day of the year. The sun is going to be the lowest down in the, in the, in the sky. So we're going to get the most sun coming from the south this direction, uh, hitting the front of the property here. But then as you know, you get closer to summer solstice, the sun goes higher in the sky and it comes more overhead. So these trees are definitely going to block, you know, any kind of solar activity, except for here on these front 10 lots. Let me see if I go a little bit further back, but you can see there's the trees behind me. So um, these 10 lots, because they're south facing, you'll be able to get solar panels in here and get the, the best bang for your buck as far as solar goes by having your home in front of the property. So if you want to do an off grid situation or just solar panels or do something to kind of minimize your electric bill, if you just want to do that, again, the way the solar system works, it's primarily solar based with the battery. And if your battery runs low, then the grid will just kick on automatically with the way that Randy, you know, uh, configures his tiny home off grid system. So you can use our grid as a power backup and basically decrease your electric bill. You may still have a little bit of electric bill on those um, on those days where maybe it's, it's been raining for two or three days straight or cloudy overhead um, or you're just using a lot of power. Um, but then the rest of the time you can utilize those batteries and just use and just live off the solar with your batteries and all. So if you want to do that one of these 10 lots in the front would be ideal for that as well. Okay. So that's what these two lots are kind of going to be reserved for. Unless you just want to be in the front of the property, you know, for, once these 10 sell out, then we're done. No more rentals are allowed. And again, off grid's not going to work in the back of the property virtually at all. So if you want to do off grid, that's something you want to do sooner than later before these 10 lots sell out. All right. So I think I've beat that dead horse here. That's we're going to keep on walking around the property now. It's maybe a little bit longer video than I anticipated but I want to show you as much as I can here on video on this beautiful day. It's been real wet. We had three and a half inches of rain last Saturday and it's about 55 degrees right now. It's, it's quite nice out, very pleasant. Um, not too cold, but uh, you know, makes you still realize it's, it is winter. And as you can see, I'll give you a little sneak peek of what's coming. If you look closely at these trees, they're wrapped in Christmas lights. So I've got an exciting display to show you tomorrow. That's all I'm going to say for now. Um, and you can also see in the, in the distance, you can see that, that last pile of, of, uh, of, of slash. Um, it's probably, I don't know, 15, 20 feet high. You can see it's burning, but it's been real wet. You got three and a half inches of rain. It's real hot and there's no big flames because it's not dry by any means, but it is burning. We'll continue to burn until this next rain system comes through, which they're saying is supposed to be another two inches or so coming through this weekend. So that lake level is going to rise. And I'm excited to do that. Also, what I'm going to do um, to kind of, I think it'll be kind of fun as well. I'm going to get a, a meter stick or a, a measuring stick for this lake so we can kind of watch and I'll have on camera, you know, to be able to have like maybe a, not a daily update, but maybe a weekly update on how full the lake gets. Um, estimates from the pe different people in the area who are familiar with this lake and people who, you know, do this kind of work, ponds and, and lakes, things like that. They believe that this lake will fill up by January or in, in the month of January, which I'm skeptical it'll fill up that fast. But again, after that last rain last weekend, seeing how, how full it got, how quickly it got, I mean, the lake, Basically, there was water in three corners of the lake bottom when it was virtually dry just a couple weeks before that. Um, so who knows? We might get it full that that quickly. But either way, I'm going to put a little measuring stick in there so we can kind of I can show you a little a little gauge. So you can kind of see exactly how much water has risen and we can kind of watch it fill and do like a little time lapse almost, you know, from week to week, kind of how much water is in there and watch this thing fill up all the way to the bottom of that riprap right there. So it's going to be real full. This water is super clear. Got another video coming as well where I'm going to uh, basically, you know, show you how, how much water is coming out. I'm going to measure it, put a five gallon bucket in there, and we're going to time it and see how much water comes out of the spring and into the lake. So that'll be another future video and show the culvert that we put in to kind of bring the spring to re redirect it 
where it was going off property before. Now we've got it directed into the lake. So I'll have a video kind of showing all about the, the water and the spring. And, and uh, that's going to be really cool. I'm real excited about that spring. Sorry, I'm talking a little fast again, getting excited. I'm going to try and slow down. Um, so lots of things to share with you still. The other thing, oh, back to the fire. I didn't finish talking about the fire. So that fire that's burning out there, um, it will probably go out uh, after this weekend, after we get enough rain to put it out. And uh, it, it, like I said, it's probably about 15 feet tall or so right now. And we've been burning slash for about, I don't know, almost two weeks, it seems like, um, just because it's been pretty wet after these last couple of rains and there's been so much slash, fresh slash. They just cut the trees down, just ripped them all out, you know, so they're, they're very wet. Um, so it's been kind of hard. Uh, things aren't as flammable when they're not dry, even though we had this, this drought. So um, about two weeks of slash that's been burning almost every single day. That, that smoke and that fire has been going. And this is probably the last of it. We're going to leave a little bit of that, uh, of that scrap, some of the bigger trees and, and root balls and things like that. Um, uh, we're going to leave it for some fish habitat so that the fish have kind of places to hide and, and feed and, and do their thing and whatnot. Um, because obviously they cleared everything out of there. So we're going to build some, some fish habitat so we can, because we're going to restock the lake with some fish in February, which is when they do the restocking of fish in this area. And um, so, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fish in here so people will be able to fish and create a little ecosystem. Uh, but this water is super clear. So you might even be able to see through from the top and down and be able to see the fish. It's going to be so clear. So we'll see. Who knows? Okay. Um, this is phase two. So I'll walk a little bit further here. And this is where the new gate's going to be. So we got the gate in front of the property right now. It's, you know, it's got a padlock on there. It's 20 feet wide uh, for, you know, obviously we keep that locked because we don't want people coming through here and there's open ditches and there's a lot of, a lot of work still going on. So it's not, you know, public, publicly open until we finish the project. So, um, and of course, if you're in the area, let me know if you want to schedule a tour, I'd be happy to walk you through here. I just, it's by appointment only because we don't, you know, have anything on site, you know, permanent quite yet. We're working to uh, get that tiny house set up as a sales office. So we'll have something like that in the future. Um, but right now we're not quite set up. We're still developing, getting things up and running here. But anyway, here is the Southeast corner. Okay. So the new gate is going to be right through here. It's going to be a nice, maybe probably a split rail fence, something like that with some vegetation on either side, again, to kind of create that that barrier between the, the public part of the property and the private part of the property. Um, so that's going to be there. I'm going to back up a little bit further to give you a better view of it, but it's going to go right through here. Oop, there we go. All right. So past that point will be private for residents only. You'll have your own special, you know, key code or clicker in order to open the gate and go through. All right. And it'll be for long-term residents only. So the people who are here in the front, they're going to have their own hot tub. They're going to have their own amenities as well for this Airbnb section. Because, we want, again, we want to encourage people to uh, you know, have a good time and have a good experience with tiny home living. But they're not going to get access to, like, the dog park. They're not going to get access to the clubhouse, the gym, the laundromat, um, or really even lake access. They'll be able to be on the lake and see the lake, but there won't have, there's going to be a dock. I haven't shared this yet. But now we're actually moving the pier. It's going to be even better now because of that riprap. But right in the middle of that riprap, we're going to have a pier shooting out. So you'll be able to walk to the middle of that, that pier and uh, hang, you know, hang out in that pier, uh, fish off that pier, you know, launch a boat and go, you know, paddling around from there or jump off and go swimming, whatever you want to do um, right from the middle. It's going to look really good. So maybe I'll put together a rendering, but basically uh, we were going to put that pier in um, while we were doing all this work. However, we, we weren't sure exactly where the water level was going to be. So what we decided to do now is we're just going to wait for the water level to rise up, especially because it's going to rise so fast. Once it gets to its you know, highest level, because at the bottom of that riprap, there's actually an overflow that, that you know, so the lake won't go too full, obviously, and, and flood its banks, because that, that stream is going to be continuing to flow in, and rainwater is going to continue to flow in as well to keep that, um, keep that uh, lake high. So um, basically, once we see exactly where that water level is all the way around the lake, um, then we'll, we'll be able to determine what, how high that uh, dock or pier needs to be so that it's the right height and it looks right. And you're not, you know, 10 feet off the, off the water level, for example. And so it's also not underwater. I mean, we know what the highest it can be, but we also want to just, we want to get that right. So it's at the right level um, for where it needs to be. And then we'll have a barge come out and uh, they'll be driving down the, the pylons or the, the posts for the, for the pier on the barge. That'll be a cool video. I'll share that as well. And uh, we'll actually probably be able to get that done before the first tiny homes are actually living here on site. Um, since the water level is expected to rise faster than we initially thought. And therefore, we'll have that barge out there and I'll be putting those pylons in and get that deck and that pier going. And that should be in place probably or possibly before uh, any tiny home residents are actually here on the property um, as well. So you'll have use of that um, probably from 
right from the beginning. So, um, again, this video is getting real long here, but it may be long. I may have to do part two. But there's just a lot of stuff I want to show you. Um, here, I'll just show you a quick little, little glance of the spring here. Here's the water from the spring. That's the new culvert we put in. And you can see the water trickling in there. And it is nonstop. And it's hard to see how much water is going in there from this angle. But that water, it's, it's and I'm going to measure. I'm going to do a future video measuring. So we'll see exactly how many gallons per minute that water is, is coming into the lake, you know, 24-7, 365 days a year. Okay. All right. Um, so from the southeast corner here, I'm going to take you to the dog park. This just got cleared out the other day. We had the, the ground shark. You probably saw that video. Um, that was just the first stage, the first step in getting that dog park ready was to get rid of all the vegetation that was growing in there, clear it all out. The, uh, isn't this beautiful? Look at this, these trees around here. So the petting zoo owners, again, this was, this used to be an old petting zoo, right? Back 10 years ago. Plus funny story about that. I'll share in a little bit about some of the exotic breeds they had here and, uh, what that did for the, the, uh, the local county kind of interesting. I'll share that later, but um, here's here's the petting zoo. Excuse me. Here is the dog park. But you can see these panels. I mean, these were these were used to house animals in the past. So it's really kind of all set up for a dog park already. When I first saw this part, I thought, man, this would be perfect, where you can walk your dog over because obviously 54 residents, everyone has a dog. Potentially, you can't just let your dogs run run free. But in the dog park, they can. They can play. They can interact. They can mingle. They can, you know, they're secure. They're not going to, you know, get. If the gate's open, they won't be able to run out because they'll be, obviously, this whole area will be fenced in and gated so that the dogs cannot escape. They can sit here and they can play and you don't have to worry about uh, them running out if somebody comes to the property and opens the gate. So, again, this was all full of trees and shrubs. There's an old, uh, I'm not sure what, what kind of animals were in there before, maybe llamas or goats or something. So that shed is there still currently. We have to work on that. But you can see that ground shark just totally tore up this area, just mulched everything in its path up to, I think it can mulch up to like six or seven inches trees. I mean, it was amazing what it could just run up to a tree and just take it out. You know, again, again none of this was planted. This was all just volunteer uh, growth, shrubs and trees and whatnot. So we've removed it all. See that there's a fence panel that we had to take out to get the uh, skid steer in here with that ground shark. So we'll put that fence back, of course. There's the exterior fence, and it's a real nice fence, too. I mean, this is some serious gauge. Get how thick this wire. I mean, this, this is some proper fencing here. So dog's not going to be able to get through that, that's for sure. So here you go. And our spring is right here, too. Just kind of blocked. I can't show you right at the moment. But, again, that'll be in another video. But uh, there's a dog park for you. All right, now I'm going to go walk back that way. So I'm going to pause it right here just to save on the length of video here. Okay, this video is getting a little bit long here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here pretty short. But let me just show you the uh, phase two lots right here on the west side. No, sorry, on the east side of the property. There's an old secondary power pole there. I'm going to take that out still. But here are the lots that needs still to be further developed. But they've been cleared out of all the trees, and so you can actually see the water right there. These are all going to be waterfront lots so and i'm on the road here you can imagine having your home right there right on the water's edge you can have a nice little sunset over that you will be facing that uh let's see here sorry um there's that riprap edge so you'll, your home will be facing on that if you're on the east side here of phase two your home will be facing that riprap over there you'll be able to see that every morning when you wake up and every night when you go to bed you'll be able to see that beautiful uh, clear, clean lake edge over there. Of course, this shed's got to go. And there's the fire. So I'm going to leave it right here. So there you have it. So I want to encourage you. Again, we've got the promotion running till the, till the end of the month. If you haven't bought your tiny house yet and you're kind of on the fence and you're waiting, this is probably the best time. You've got that 24 foot RJO for $25,000 plus your, your lot, plus your lot on the lake tongue twister there. So 
here we have it. This is the kind of the latest work that we've done here on the property so far. A lot more coming, a lot more videos um, to follow. Some exciting things I'm going to show you too. Some things that we're doing to kind of make it a little bit fun for the holiday season. I hope to have that video out maybe tomorrow or so. Um, but anyway, in the meantime, if you haven't bought your tiny house yet and you're wanting to get on this property, it was a great opportunity. I would do it now if at all possible. You could get a 24 foot RJO for as little as $10,000 down, including a lot here on this property. 5,000 ITH, 5,000 here to us. And that gives you in a couple of three or four months extra in order to come up with the remaining $30,000 to get all that sorted out and in place so that you can have your home here within a couple of months. And now all you're doing, all you're looking at is $300 a month uh, lot rental and then your utilities, whatever you use, water, power, and sewer, okay? Um, again, internet's included, trash is included, the gym, the clubhouse, the dog park, lake access, uh, the hot tub access, all these different amenities that we're gonna have is all gonna be included for that $300 a month. So heck of a deal right now going on until the end of the year. Um, after that, you know, after that period of time, um, the, uh, I believe the RJO will no longer be, the, the price is probably gonna go up in price. So you'll still be able to get it. I think it'll just be at a different price. So if you can, you got another three weeks or so, take advantage of that. Um, huge deal. Randy's also including, of course, those double dormers on the 24 foot RGO for free right now. No additional price for that. Normally a $5,000 upgrade. Uh, you can also add some additional steps for 2500 grand or $2,500 as well, or any other amenities with, for 25% off. So if you're looking to buy the tiny house, now's the time to pull the trigger. And uh, that sale with the, or that promotion that Randy's throwing for that 24 foot RGO with the double dormers, I believe it ends tomorrow. So again, I want to get this video out as fast as I can here, kind of give you an update of where things are at with the property. I got much more video footage to kind of show with you of the work that we've done, but I want to get this quick video out just to kind of, because that promotion is about to end, and I think it's an incredible promotion, and those RJOs, 24 footers with the double dormers are going to look great on this property. So if there's any way you can, you can swing it and get that done before Friday, call them up, get that contract going, get it paid for, at least put the $5,000 down, the 20% they require in order to get that build started. And then again, it gives you a couple of three, four, five months before you have to come up with the rest of it, depending on you know where you fall in their, their schedule of builds. So anyway, Hans Schaff here. The cottages at Pine Lake outside Huntsville, Alabama, our new tiny house community that we're developing here for 54 tiny homes on the lake and in the forest here. Uh, it's, about a, it's just under a seven acre property, We've got about a two acre lake and uh, a lot more work that we're gonna do here and some more exciting surprises and announcements we got coming uh, and some more, a whole lot of more video footage in the next few days and weeks. All right, Hans Schaff, Go tiny, be free. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Got any comments? I want to hear them. Put them in the comments below. Take care. See you next video.